feel it's an issue. So he brought this idea of uh, teaching English for uh, students who are from the countryside or rural side, where having um, uh, like you know a teacher who is good at English teaching other students. So that's the biggest problem right now. So he has a solution that he had built. His team got built on those things. So here he is. His name is Vishnu Saran, and uh, he represents Wise Cube India. Uh, right. Uh, first of all, let me invite all of you guys. Thank you for joining us here. Uh, uh, so yeah, um, I'll just give you a backstory of how we started this. Now uh, we've seen a lot of startups coming in India for the last five years. And whenever we see a startup, it's really motivating to see the entrepreneur going through all these challenges. But what truly ignites a person to start a business? It all starts with solving a problem. Right? So every entrepreneur is trying to solve a problem in the world. And when the solution is strong enough, that's when it becomes a business. Right? So uh, when we picked voice technology, it was uh, in the very early stages. And this is when Alexa was also not present in India. What you observe is when you pick a technology niche, uh, it's like picking up a hammer. And then every problem that you see, it looks like a nail. So we had to be very focused on uh, targeting very specific use cases where voice technology made sense. Mm -hmm. And that's where we discovered that teaching English in rural India is a very big challenge. There are some schools in Andhra Pradesh which are hiring teachers from Karnataka and Kerala just so that it becomes a marketing strategy for them in the next year to tell the parents that we've got someone from outside your state and they, they cannot talk in the native language so they have to resort to English. Okay. So, uh, and then they're paying thrice the uh, normal salary. So there's a huge gap over here and there's a huge requirement uh, of teaching English to these kids. Plus, it also addresses the privilege gap. A uh, lot of students in India, uh, they struggle to get a lot of opportunities and the ones that really do, it's not because they have uh, a lack uh, a superior ability in terms of talent, but they have good communication skills and communication skills are very vital. So we've designed a 300 day curriculum where every day there's a 30 minute session in the classroom where the Alexa is a teacher and it calls across uh, the students and it invites, let's say, you know, Vaishali and Raj to come forward and then they, they play a small game uh, and why the other students watch. So 30 minutes of uh, regular listening to English and then comprehending the messages, it gives them uh, a lot of exercise over a period of one year. And then we have regular assessments as well with each and every student, where um, uh, we personalize the training and give reports to the parents as the student is struggling with pronouns or this person has to mm -hmm. put more focus on parts of speech. So the, the point that we're trying to address is um, voice technology is going to change the way how uh, consumers are going to talk with brands. And it, uh, like, just like every logo and tagline, we think that every business is going to have a personality of its own, a signature voice of its own, which will be witty, sarcastic, or humorous. Mm. And then you can actually talk to uh, the company itself. So um, also voice is one of the most natural forms of human communication. And that is the reason why we think that the next one billion users who are going to get connected, it will be through voice. So yeah, like I said, um, his idea is to connect billion users across the world now and uh, not only just in the education field. So we have other use cases. By the way, I'm Krish Mohan. Um, I'm also part of YSQ uh, USA. Uh, we're, I've been in US for like 16 plus years and we have a few companies working with the government agencies, developing their solutions like uh, healthcare, citizen services, and uh, like uh, uh, transportation. A lot of that stuff. So 15 plus years working with the government and they have a lot of welfare programs uh, similar to what India has, but they are very good in taking them to the uh, you know people, whereas India is having problems. So when I compare those, there are some use cases where I was very much interested in. So I spoke with Vishnu and we collaboratively working on several other things. Okay. So uh, teaching education or teaching English is a one uh, Pioneer item that from YSQ, but we also have other uh, areas to cover like hospitality and uh, uh, like you know tribal healthcare system and uh, uh, bringing like you know local 
through like in a rural government and local government to a state government, you need to connect them together. Like a people, they want to ask something, like one of a state, state official, they couldn't. They have to go through a big channel. Rather, they want to connect directly or convey their message, first-hand information to it. So that's, what, that's kind of use cases we are, we are working on right now. So a lot of those things in pipeline. Um, we have active development going on in Bangalore, Hyderabad, and Tirupati, as well as in the US. So these are the four uh, areas we are developing. And soon we'll be entering into other countries where English is not their primary. If you don't know good communication skills, or if you don't have a good communication skills, vocabulary is the biggest problem. Like, see, we are so good in our own language because we've been uh, like right from your birth, your mother talking to you the same language as you do, and then uh, around you, the society feeds a lot of vocabulary into you. So there's no surprise that you talk so good because you know you have vocabulary. But when it comes to another language, you cannot really read through all the dictionary. As a part of our business, uh, when we are trying to run a bootstrap company, it's always very vital and key to get the initial revenues to kick in. So we have a services sector uh, which focuses on uh, developing voice applications for other businesses. And that's where we also realize that every industry has a use case where voice is applicable and uh, it's taking that industry to the future. For example, uh, there's a YouTube channel which has over 800,000 views. It's from uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, these guys call themselves the honest guys. So it's like a guided meditation uh, YouTube uh, channel. We have created an Alexa skill for them. It's like, let's say I have my business, and if my clients are able to listen to my voice and uh, get answers to their questions, it makes more of an impact. Think about how we have evolved as a society as well. Celebrities in the past, they used to have fans flocking around when the shooting was happening. And then they were fan mail. Now it's Twitter, a small tweet. And then uh, if, uh, let's say, Brad Pitt retweets your tweet or replies to your tweet, it becomes a huge news. But just imagine in the future, I ask a question and then I get it. I ask a question like, uh, hey, Brad, when is your next movie? And then the answer comes back in his voice. How cool would that be? Right? So I think we are stepping into the future uh, with this voice technology where consumers are more, uh, you know, compelled to talk again and again with a brand. So, yeah, and Krish, I had a question for you now. You were sharing some very insightful thoughts about how to tackle the healthcare system in especially very remote areas and in tribal uh, areas where it's more of a DIY kind of system where they can actually talk to the device, mm -hmm. uh, which is like a, a, a kiosk sort of. Right. Uh, I think it would help if you can share a few thoughts about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, we were at a FinTech Festival in Andhra Pradesh, we had it, and uh, there was a one doctor, he uh, expressed his grievance over, like, you know, how uh, there was a tribal, a uh, uh, lot of people, they died just because of malaria, just because of, like, you know, very, a small disease that could have been saved their lives if a uh, government had reached or somebody reached them with the medication, like simple tablets, right? So uh, one of the government initiative was like to have a, a PHC, primary health care centers over there, uh, very available to them in their vicinity about five kilometers, but it was very hard to keep the doctor. They had erected the building and they had a building, but keep the doctor, you know, till late evening was difficult because they were living far away from those locations, and that was the biggest problem. And today, like you know, they have phones and all, but not that you know very receptive when it comes to a problem. So I was actually giving him uh, an idea, like why can't we integrate artificial intelligence and some of the voice technology together to address some of those basic uh, problems, like health problems, for example. We talk to the doctor and we get that in that area, in that region, what are the significant or uh, quite common problems and what are the symptoms of those and what is the medication that we prescribe. Because government spending so much of money giving the free medication and all that stuff, but the problem is they are not reaching the person when the person needs most. So that is the biggest problem. So we felt like Vishnu and I were talking about it. If we can have a, a, a kiosk where it can have a little voice device uh, integrated and uh, connects through a um, uh, system where a patient comes to that location and say, it's a PHC, it's closed, mm -hmm. but you have a kiosk 24 by 7. 
So you open it and say, uh, doctor, like say, Dr. Robert, for example. Uh, it can say, Dr. Robert. Then it actually respond back, uh, yes, uh, because you, uh, there is a vitals, there is a fingerprint. Uh, India has other systems, so <laughs> once you put it, it knows who you are, right? So say like, uh, you are, you are uh, let's say Raj. Hey, hello Raj, how can I help you? That's a doctor's voice. So then say like, I have a stomach ache, my lower abdomen and all that. Let's stomach ache, basically. And then doctor says, is there a stomach ache, lower abdomen, or upper, or side, or this? Then you answer a question. And when was the last time you went pee, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Then like a similar frequent questions to diagnose what is exactly problem, or close to a problem. And the doctor has prescribed saying like, you know what? I know this problem is maybe this. Uh, I can definitely see you tomorrow. But tonight, you need to spend your time like this. So don't take this, this, this. Take a little medication. And the kiosk has a little uh, drawer opens and there is a little medication that keeps him okay for tonight so tomorrow morning he can see it if that symptoms are very vigorous like you know having a, a blood in his motion and all that stuff then yes there is a problem for it and it is it directly connects to the doctor the same machine connects to the doctor or send the message to the doctor is urgent even it is like a too high priority or top one red flag sends a message to uh, like you know 911 call mm -hmm. similar in India it's our 108 it's the ambulance comes there so take the guy since you know who you are because your uh, vitals were checked and other was there so come directly take the guy to the hospital nearest so this was the kind of use case we discussed and we, sp we spoke with the doctor and the doctor was like really like that but the question the bird came in whether can we do this so that's in our pipeline right right now and we're working on that. If that can be done, that's the major solution for all the terrain, tribal, uh, people who are living in remote areas. Because internet is all over the place. All they need is a little SIM to connect to a, like you know, your, your uh, uh, LG, 4G network, right? So if that is there, why can't we use it for medical things too? So we are kind of working on all that stuff, pretty much. And what? Uh, validated this idea again for me personally is uh, coming to Switzerland and there are so many uh, methods where there's no human involvement like when I got down at the airport and I had to put my baggage there so that I can roam around Zurich uh, it was a completely uh, a self system a do-it-yourself system but then I couldn't uh, understand that system initially because it was completely in German but then just imagine if the entire system was voice operated it would have made my life a lot Easy. easier. True. And I wouldn't have to roam around trying to get some people to explain to me how this works. Right. Um, Same with the Davos app, like, you know, we were ro roaming, driving in these streets of Davos without knowing the science of it, whether you can park the car or you cannot park the car, all that stuff, right? And when I ask the officer, they say, no English, uh, kind of. It was difficult. I got a hundred dollars, a hundred francs uh, penalty. I had to pay because I didn't know that the car should not stay more than two hours. But the Davos app that we have, if that has a voice technology integrated, have a translation for you or some kind of thing, could have been helped. And this also linked with a uh, lot of launches talking about industry 4.0 and uh, having a woman empowerment and. Uh, like you know how do we prepare ourselves for the 4.0 and all so we we were briefly every time that we discuss we brief out that how can we address some of this issue being entrepreneur being upcoming you know visioner uh, all those stuff we kind of discussed a lot of that in my opinion most of the time let's like, see industry 3.0 being there for like 30 plus years if not if I'm right like you know it's been there from 90s whatever the things that we see so maybe 4.0 4 lasts for another 15, 20 years. So you see that a lot of things come into. Most of the time, where the problem is, industry 4.0 facing, there are less number of women they require. I mean, they require so many workforce, but gender inequality is there for various reasons, cultural differences, cultural issues, prejudice about the women and men relationship, and culturally, like, you know, they separated on, they, they were kind of, you know, um, stop from working into certain areas like you know shifts you cannot work three hours three shifts in a day so a lot of these barriers were there stopping a woman workforce coming into the uh, industry uh, if, since it came into the world a lot of women stepped into because it's more of a soft work 
conversational marketing software. It's more B two B, but it's uh, it's it's like a chatbot on the website when you go there. And it, um, when you get when you get there, it's actually they do have some um, canned responses, but it's more of a conversation. I think that's what you guys are going for with yeah. voice. Yes, exactly. So instead of having some canned responses, I mean, do you see it in the future where you're actually having? I don't know. Just, yeah, it's, it's more than canned responses. It's more of a real conversation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think all of us are heading towards uh, a world which is like Westworld, if you have yeah. uh, seen yeah. the show. So, um, yes, absolutely. Uh, I think with companies like Lyrebird, where uh, you can create an audio profile and then you type any text and it's going to talk back to you like you. So, uh, we, we will definitely heading into a world where the conversation is not just prefixed, but is adaptive and uh, learns on the go. But uh, it's it, it's a little it, it's a little hand. I don't know if I trust you to answer that question. I think I think <laughs> see the beauty of uh, uh, technology is yes it definitely can mimic what human does, but what it can does is replace the human, correct? So any artificial intelligence, robotics, those are all kind of we chose that to work for us. Let's say it can be another Krish, but it cannot replace Krish. Same. And it cannot replace vision. The reason is, we want that world of uh, that you know making this technology work for everybody and bring that equal and equal equality in every way, like you know, economical, social, and race, and all that stuff. So technology is definitely helping us, and we are here today.